Excitement. Adventure. Boston Blackie. Enemy of those who make him an enemy. Friend of those who have no friends. Yes, sir. That's Boston Blackie, and he's quite a guy. In just a moment, we'll see him in one of his exciting adventures. But first, a word from our sponsor. Right there. Got it, Inspector. Tell Regan to cancel all leaves and call in all men. Yes, sir, Inspector. Attention, all cars. Bank truck hold up. Driver and guard murdered. Getaway car black sedan. Make and license unknown. Three men in car armed with anti-tank weapon and machine gun. Apprehend all possible suspects, but proceed with caution. Car 21, set up roadblock and free stone and rosemary. Car 33, cover intersection at Hot Sienda Boulevard and Douglas Drive. Car 29, check eastbound traffic at Imperial Highway and Dunkirk. Oh, Inspector Faraday. Who's talking? It's me, Tommy Adams, sir. I'm in the south area, corner of Compton and Leppingwell Road. Standing by for instruction, sir. Who's with you? Well, uh, no one, sir. But I'm due to pick up Sergeant Mallory in half an hour. New cops and cops that are alone don't get in on a job like this. Report when you pick up Mallory. Yes, Inspector. Sir. Here, take over. I'm going to see what I can find out at that murder scene. If any calls come in, I'll... Uh... Oh, there he is. Tell me up about the bank truck. I'm going to see if I can keep Boston Blackie out of my hair. Hi, Inspector. Hi, Inspector. Oh, Whitey. Mary. Well, if it isn't Boston Blackie, my pop-up butt in chum. What are you doing here? I'm looking for Tommy Adams. I want to break a bottle of champagne on his brow. But if anyone would want to be launched as a cop, I'll never know. What's wrong with being a cop? Yeah, Blackie, speak up. May I offer Exhibit A? Listen, I'm going up to the drugstore and get a thing that big. A hot cake? No, an aspirin, but as big as a hot cake. Oh, uh, Faraday, you're a card. Mind if I use your phone? Well, that's car radio, Blackie. Well, how else can I talk to Tommy Adams? Uh, in car 42. Well, I'll have to cut you off, though, if a call comes in. Sure. Calling car 42. Come in, Adams. Yes, sir. Adams reporting, sir. Adams, tell me, is your uniform buttoned according to regulations? Oh, well, yes, sir. Of course, sir. And did you get a haircut? Well, yes, sir. Uh, two days ago, sir. Why? Now, tell me, Adams, are you a married man? Why, no. Uh, no, sir. A month from now, I'm going to be, sir. I, I, I plan... Hey! <laughs> Is that you, Blackie? Ah, you got me nailed. Hold him, Blackie. I'm about to dish out my first ticket. A coupe just went through a boulevard stop. Good, Tommy. The city needs every buck it can get. Tommy. Well, the city's really going to get fed on this ticket. <laughs> They're joyriding. Be careful, Tommy. Well, that's 
strap. Guess we really have something to celebrate tonight, Blackie. Get a load of what I say to this guy. Tommy! Tommy! Blackie, what happened? Come on, Mary. Doesn't make sense. Kid just starting out in life. Everything to look forward to. A thing like this happened. as soon as I got the report. Thanks, Faraday. Lucky, my big blabbering mouth ain't much good at a time like this. But I'm gonna make you and the kid a promise. There's a saying in the underworld, never kill a cop or a newspaper man, cause they'll nail you every time. Lucky, we're gonna make those words stick. Thanks, Faraday. Give me a picture of what happened. Tommy was on this side of the car when he got a blast from a Tommy gun. The car was gray, gray over red. The marks are on the right front fender where he crashed it. Well, that's something to go by. Any tire prints? Well, Inspector Faraday. Yeah? A call for you. Faraday speaking. This is Officer Kelly. We found your black sedan in the back of a warehouse. Money wrappers on the floor make the identification positive. Any fingerprints? No, sir, and motor vehicle has her tagged as a stolen car. Well, that was a cinch to me. This may be a lead. The warehouse watchman said that his car was stolen about the time your sedan showed up. What color was it? Gray, a gray coupe. Oh, where's the watchman now? Staying right beside me. You ask him if he's had a paint job and what the color was before. Right. Hold on. Had a paint job recently? What color was it? Yeah, about six months ago. Used to be red. Good work. Blackie, a couple of hours ago, two men were murdered in a bank truck holdup. Maybe I'll want you to go on this case with me, because you and I both want to get Tommy's killer, and I just had a flash that they're one and both the same. Well, that's good enough for me, Faraday. Where do we start? And the guy with the bazooka was standing right over there. The range was point blank, so it didn't take an expert to blast the armor with a rocket. What about the money? 43,000 in hundreds, fifties, and twenties. Serial numbers? Yeah, but the bank don't know them, and I'm sure we don't. What about the guy who phoned in about the holdup? Oh, he was standing down here, but too far away to recognize the three men. Oh, Inspector. Yeah. They just picked up the getaway coupe. Ditched in a side road? Right. No clues, no prints? Right. See? Give me a boost. I have another look around here. Faraday sure has a tough case to crack. Everybody wants money. Hey, Blackie, look! Look, Blackie, maybe we are lucky. Look at this. $50 bill. Yeah, I found it on the floor, but it's all burned down on one side. Still negotiable. Yeah, but all we got to do now is wait till another one turns up and we'll have a lead to the killers. Excuse me, Mary. Be right back. Play a double or nothing. I'll bet you really come here to play 20 questions, eh? Not quite that many. I'll play it. I get 20 questions to tell you what's on your mind. It's animal. Three animals you want to find for murder. Right with the first question. <laughs> Sorry, Blackie, but I can't help you. The boys on my side of the fence would also like to find the unholy tree. They've upped the temperature in town. And we don't like it. That's a disappointment. I was counting on you. I'm loaded with disappointments. Don't pin your hopes on finding the gilt edge stuff with the burnt edge. You know about that, too? Common knowledge. Common enough to reach the ears of the unholy three, so they won't be passing them. Thanks for the game.
Mary, do you have a $50 bill? $50? Sorry, pal. I just bought a package of gum and it broke me. No. I mean, on your shelf in the kitchen. Oh, you mean the one on the top shelf in the sugar bowl that I never put sugar in because of my figure? Yeah, that one. Lucky, you are a snoop. Come on, Mary. And while in the kitchen, I'll give the bank note the same treatment you give the toast. Whitey, come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Exciting, isn't it? We'll continue with Boston Blackie in just a moment. Right there is the bank where they spotted the burned 50. Deposited by a man from the delicatessen. Right there. Give me a piece of chalk. Now we'll blanket this area and tip off every shop and store to watch for the burned 50. It's too late for us to keep our lead undercover. Those rats are holed up somewhere over there and I'm going to find them. The Hill News. One of the burnt fifties showed up. Yeah. Any idea who passed it? No, but the delicatessen man is over there looking at the pictures right now. Let's go and have a talk with him. Oh, no, thanks. All right. <clears throat> I'll keep you posted. That's the last man I want to see. Or have see me, rather. What will Faraday say when he finds out that you... As I was saying, what if he finds out about the 50? Don't make me shudder. Well, aren't you building him up to an awful letdown? Mary, this case is balked like a mule. Maybe a burnt 50 showing up will build a fire under it. Maybe two 50s will build a bigger fire. Funny, I never seem to have a $50 bill. Oh, so you know about that one, too? Honor bright. OK. In the back of my closet and a part of my shoe bag where most girls keep their dancing pumps, which I don't happen to need because I go with a guy by the name of Boston. Come on, Mary. You've got money to burn. What's happening? What's going on? It don't make sense. It don't. It just don't. It can't be possible. since the first burnt bell got passed. Shouldn't have done it, Fred. You shouldn't double-cross us. I didn't. I didn't pass the second 50 either. Open up and let's talk it over. Oh, sure, sure. You said you'd kill me if the second bill got passed. Well, I ain't taking any chances. I hear you bought a big ring. Yeah, open up. I'd like to see it. It ain't so big. And I bought it with good money, the same as you fellas got. And I promised not to spend it for two years. Well, I won't. Not, not for three years, maybe. So leave me alone, will you? Hey, Fred. Yeah? Move closer. There's something important I want you to hear. What is it? This. came downstairs, you didn't see anybody running off? No, not a soul. This may interest you, Inspector. It was under the mattress. Well, it sure does. See if you can find some more. Yes, sir. Hello, Mary. Hello, Inspector. And Blackie. Hiya, Faraday. Why the gay mood? Well, Come on, give with the facts. One down, two to go. Here's the burned 50, something didn't spend. Shot through the door, huh? Right. This is what happened, Blackie. The three crooks probably had a deal not to pass the burn 50s. But Fred got itchy fingers and careless and went out and spent a couple. The other two figured that would lead me to him and later on to them. So they went and bumped him off and slammed a door right in my face. A fine piece of deduction, Faraday. I know it. Hey, you. Yes, sir. Where's the phone? There's one in my room. I'm going to call up the two men who got the burnt fifties and see if they remember anybody that looked like the guy that got shot. Show me the phone. Yes, uh, this way, please. Hello? 
Faraday right? Hiya, Bill. Hiya, Blackie. Find anything? Just the usual. Well, was Faraday right? Up to a point. Fred's Confederates only thought he was passing the 50s. I passed the first one. You passed the second. Congratulations. My rainy day money was well spent. Remind me to give you a check. Oh, I will. Over and over. Hey, Blackie, don't touch anything. I want to check something with the inspector. What are you looking for? Anything. Names, mostly. This murder should have tangible clues. Where did Red hang out? Who were his pals? Who did he know? Pardon me, but I couldn't quite help but overhear what you were saying about Mr. Carson and his pals. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. Thanks. I need plenty of help. Well, uh, during the past few weeks, Mr. Carson spent quite a lot of time at home. In fact, we had a nightly cribbage game. Did he have many visitors? Did uh, two men come to see him? Oh, well, yes. Uh, one night, two men did arrive. They talked out in the hall for a while. Then Mr. Carson returned and said we'd have to call off our game. Can you describe them? Yes, I think so. They, they, they were large men. One of them had a scar running from his ear almost over to the corner of his mouth. The other fellow was sort of nondescript. He, he spoke with a slight accent. Foreigner, I would say. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, the incident almost slipped my mind entirely and until the gentleman who was using my telephone mentioned something about a package of $50 bills. Something else. This is a uh, paycheck stub from the Williams Gravel Quarry. Do you know anything about it? Well, I've never been there, if that's what you mean. But that was Mr. Carson's former place of employment. One more favor? Of course. Would you mind riding out to this gravel quarry with me? Maybe we can identify uh, the man with the scar and uh, your man with the voice. I'd be glad to. Me too. Oh, no, Mary. No, no, I'm counting you out. Listen, the gravel quarry is no place for a girl. Well, start counting all over again. I don't want to be left behind when the fun starts. But, Mary. Come along, sir. Words will get you nowhere. They don't mesh. The parts don't fit. Well, what's the trouble, Faraday? Well, the man who took in the second burn 50 just remembered who passed it, and it wasn't Fred. Really? Yeah, it was a girl, Blackie. A very pretty girl. A girl? Yeah. How oh, interesting. Uh, tell me, uh, about Mary's age? Yes, and about Mary's height, too. Come on, Blackie. Oh, just a minute, Mary. Faraday, how, how was this girl dressed? Well, she had on a gray dress and a chartreuse hat and a red and chartreuse belt and uh, a red purse. Interesting. Any other leads? Yes, she had a dog with her. About that big brown dog with a white... About like Whitey? Yeah, about... Whitey! Mary! Come on, Mary, talk. Did you pass that deputy? Mary, talk up, talk up. to the man, Blackie. Oh, tough break, kid. What? But you might as well come clean. I'll get you the best attorney in town. Oh, come along, mister. I don't believe I know your name. Yeah, uh, Melman. Uh, call, call on, Melman. Come on, pass up, Mary, pass up. Did you pass that for 50? Come on, Mary, go. <laughs> Something I can do for you? No, thanks. We're just looking around. Go ahead. Oh, by the way, do you have a phone here I can use? There's one in the office, right over there. Thanks. I'll be right out. All right. What's going on? going on. We've fallen into a trap. Trap? What do you mean? Fred didn't pass those burnt fifties. No? Who did? He did. Well, he said he'd never been to a quarry. So on the way out, I took a couple of wrong turns. He steered me right. He even showed me a shortcut. All right, Blackie, I'll buy it. But sit tight till I get out there with a the squad car. I see things different. Suppose I stall out here with Millman until you have a chance to tap his phone. Set up a tail for him. 
And if I'm right, he may lead us to the third man. I'll buy that, too. Take care of yourself, Blackie. And I'll have a tail waiting to pick up Melman when you drop him at the hotel. Right. Here he comes. Oh, yes, uh, I'm sure my friend will appreciate your kind invitation, though this is a little out of our line. And, oh, Blackie, th this uh, gentleman has kindly invited us to uh, just uh, have a tour uh, and uh, see the whole quarry. Oh, I'd like nothing better. Let's start down here below the conveyor belt. This will give us an opportunity to find those two men. Sifted away and the rock carried to the crusher. We carry the stuff all the way from the bottom. Watch. Blackie, sure. But now, let's get back to you passing the 50s. Well, I put myself in the place of the crooks. Everything was going along fine. Couldn't have been better. But if I were a crook, and those burnt 50s started bobbing up, I'd become a little upset, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, Blackie. Yes, Mary? Speaking of the 50s, you see that? Uh, what about it? Your bank is on that corner. And you see that? Sure, what's there? A church. And would you rather go up to your bank teller and get me my hundred? Oh, uh, would you rather stroll up the other aisle? Mary, I'm awfully glad you brought this up. You are? You remember when I stopped off downstairs for a few minutes? Uh-huh. I went up to a window and signed some papers, and they gave me this. 
Oh, Blanky, that's wonderful. But shouldn't we have been with you? Oh, not necessarily. I claimed your fifties. Here they are. Still negotiable. Sicken, Whitey. Sicken. Whitey. Listen to me. I'm your father. No. <laughs>